Hello, Africa. My name is Eunice Tony, and this is ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. It is a show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. How have you been from the last time we met? I want to believe that a lot of positive things have happened to you. All right, today's show promises to be very exciting as we usually do, and I'm going to be having two guests with me. But before we go on, I'd like to introduce to you my sponsors. Those who are regular viewers already know that I start with Vortic, Vortic, Vortic. Vortic is my hydration partner. Whenever you think water, you have to think Vortic. The beautiful thing about Vortic is that they are environmentally friendly. Whenever you drink your Vortic, do not litter the streets of Ghana or the streets of Africa. Find the vantage point bin that Vortic has placed all over, twist the bottle and drop it right there. Vortic, naturally. Another sponsor of ours that deserves a lot of accolades is Afariwa Styles. You see the way I look? I'm looking so lovely in my red because it's the month of love and I choose to celebrate it with the red color. However, I want to let you know that Afariwa Styles can be located on Instagram and Facebook at afariwa.styles. Afariwa takes care of both ladies and gentlemen outfits. So for those contemporary styles that you're looking for, Afariwa will make sure that you get the best out of it. You can also go to her physically at Osu or at Labadi area, just as if you're going towards Teshi Nungwa Road, you find her strategically positioned at the container bus stop. Ask for Afariwa and you definitely will find her. You can also reach her on phone. Her phone number right now is on the screen. Call her right now and let her know that she needs to put together something beautiful for you that you're going to be using on Valentine's Day and even for other programs ahead. Afariwa Styles, thank you so much for the beautiful things you do for me. And oh, my hair is beautiful. It's so lovely. It's proudly put together by Awo's Hair. You can locate Awo's Hair on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for her on Awo's underscore hair. And you get any kind of wake up you want. If it's a hair piece, you get it. If you want it bleached, if you want it twisted or braided, she's going to sort you out. Awo's Hair is one place you need to check out when it comes to your hair needs. Chana Shito, Ghana's number one pepper sauce, is actually doing something really beautiful when it comes to our dishes. If you have not tried Chana Shito, I need you to look out for it. And the presentation and packaging is on point. When you need to present it to someone, you will not feel ashamed. You know, some Shitos are packaged in some ways that when you present it, there's oil all over it. Not Chana Shito. Chana Shito will never disappoint you in terms of presentation and in terms of taste. So look out for now I'm going to be taking you over to the 60 seconds update segment where we tell you what's happening to African women here in Ghana and across the world. Do stay tuned. Madam Ayoko Buchi, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration designated on Monday called for the consolidation of the Ghana-Saudi Arabia relations for the mutual benefit of their people. She noted that Ghana had been keen in exploring avenues to expand the existing cordial relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, including a visit by the President Nana Adudankwa Ikufadu. This was being said when the Minister of State for African Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Ahmed Katan, paid the Ketsi call on Madame Boche in Accra. The essence of Mr. Katan's visit to Ghana was to consolidate Saudi Arabia's relation with Ghana and to seek Ghana's continuous support for Saudi Arabia's interest in the Middle East region. The 27th of January was a special day as it culminated the end of a strenuous 315-mile walk from Kai Lahun to Freetown to make the statement against rape culture in Sierra Leone. Hindolo Pokawa and Dustin Montgomery, two friends from Minnesota, traveled to Sierra Leone because they felt they needed to stand up, speak out, and lend their voice and effort to stop rape in the country. Hindolo felt the pain of the rape and murder of the five-year-old Khadija Sako and felt the need to do something, culminating in this groundbreaking event. Their journey began with only two people but ended with a team of six, contributing one 
mile here and there with food, a place to sleep, security and emotional support. The team found support from the Ministry of Gender and Children Affairs, Sierra Leone Police, UN Women, Civil Society, the private sector and the media. Ghanaian actress and wife of Eugene Ba, popularly known as Prior Honeho, Beverly Afaglu, has asserted that Ghanaians are career killers. She said in an interview online that her husband has currently put his music career on hold to pursue higher education and also work on the side abroad. Adding on to what she said, she made it clear that Ghanaians did not give her husband the acceptance he needed when he decided to go solo. She therefore cautioned the young artist in Ghana, especially on social media, not to run down legends who have entertained Ghanaians, but rather urge them to give people the chance to exhibit what they have. Wow, you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. As I said earlier, it is a show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. Well, my guests are in and they're looking really lovely and ready to actually speak to us concerning our topic for today. You know, one thing I like about um, the whole conversation we're going to be having today is that we're going to be talking about women empowerment. Uh, but before we get there, I'd like to give you a message from Ghana Beverage Awards. Ghana Beverage Awards has opened up nominations and they are asking for you to nominate your favorite beverage. If you know that beverage that you like, a milk beverage, chocolate beverage, water, whatever kind of beverage it is that you, you, you like, we need you to go nominate them on www.ghanabeverageawards.com. Nominate them into the categories that you're going to be finding there and, well, they may stand the chance of winning. So if you've not nominated them yet, please go ahead and nominate them, okay? So now uh, to the business of the day. I'm going to be introducing you to our Reverend Mrs. Gloria Kafui Lamte. She is the Deputy Overseer for the Believers House of Worship International. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to be introducing the next speaker as well to you and uh, after which I'm going to be reading their profiles because we need to really know the kind of women that we are having today here. And then next to be introduced is Rhoda Doku. Rhoda is, the is a communications and development specialist. So can we please have a look at them? Okay, that's mm -hmm. Rhoda on your screen right now. And that's the Reverend Mrs. at my immediate right. Thank you very much. Ladies, you're welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Oh, uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, how has it been? You know, these times um, we have to cover our faces because coronavirus is in town and uh, it has not left. Mm -hmm. People have to follow the protocols mm -hmm. and all of that. But Reverend Mrs., tell me, how has it been at your church in terms of, you know, the protocols? How have you been following it? Um, it's not been easy, but we, we are trying. We are enforcing all the protocols. Some people are very stubborn, but... We, we are doing our best. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So uh, as you move around town, how, how have you been seeing it? Do you think people are really following the protocols? Um, honestly, um, I think most of us have relaxed when you go to the market centers. Um, people do not seem to care like before. Um, the fact that instead of us wearing the masks fully, others wear it just to cover the mouth. I think a lot of education needs to be done in terms of communicating in the language that people will understand that wearing the mask is not just to cover the mouth, it's supposed, it, it's supposed to cover from the nose to the mouth. To but the unfortunately, mouth you get a lot of people just wearing it to um, cover, cover their the mouth, mouth and others tell you they cannot breathe. So maybe we need a new concept of producing masks that people can breathe through and them and also make them understand that the virus goes through the nostril and not just from the lips. And you know, in the era where we have schools reopening, the children will always pull it on their chin. So teachers have a responsibility to also ensure that the children will always do the right thing. Because if you leave a child to be responsible, the parents have asked the child to wear the mask from home. But right after getting to the street or getting to the school, whilst they are playing, teachers cannot monitor them 24 seven. So we need to have some conscientization um, processes in making them understand to make a part of them. And with that, I think we'll get a long way. 
Okay, all right. So with the way Rhoda just spoke, she's a communication specialist. So when it comes to communicating, mm -hmm. she really is going to be interested <laughs> in that field. I'd like you to know that um, she had her master's in international affairs with, a, with an African studies major from Ohio University in the USA in 2014. She's also the founder of Remodeling Early Mothers Initiative, Back to School for Early Teen Moms, founder for Empowered Women in Motion, a platform for broken women, and is the director for Global Operations for Global Youth Empowerment Center. She has an 18-year-old son that she loves very much, and she's passionate <laughs> about youth and women in governance. She believes that the youth should be given the voice to take decision in governance for Ghana and across the various African countries. And then our Reverend Mrs. is also another powerful woman. She is the deputy overseer and wife of the general overseer, Apostle Abraham Lamte of Believer's House of Worship International. She has been in ministry for about 18 years through which Believers in Travel were, was birthed. The uncommon unction upon her life has led her to many women through the tenets of God's word to birth their God-given talents. She has a diploma in counseling and a degree in theology. Her life experience and encounter with God has been a yardstick to transform the lives of people who meet her. She is blessed with three children and two adopted children. Fantastic profiles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, ladies, you're welcome once again. Thank so, you. So uh, to keep up with the conversation, I'd like you to know we're going to be discussing two pertinent issues today on the show. First is going to be about, um, okay, I'm being called right now that we need to just do this, uh, go on a commercial break. We'll be right back and continue the conversation, please. Do stay tuned. And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Before we went on that break, I was going to let you know that we're going to be discussing two pertinent issues that actually bother women. First is about empowering them, making them a better version of themselves. And uh, who is going to take the lead in that conversation? It's going to be Rhoda. Rhoda Doku being a communication specialist and the director of the places I mentioned to you earlier is going to be dealing that aspect and that's because there's a conference that is coming up and uh, you may not know so much about it but today we'll let you know it's called the international level up conference 2021 Rhoda is going to take us through all the plans and how you're going to be able to get a ticket and all the conversations around what they've been doing in terms of empowering women and the youth and we're going to be discussing another issue that pertains to women and that's submission at home when it comes to submitting in marriage, submitting to your husband, people have various interpretations around it. Some of us would even say, Paul said, well, I mean, you shouldn't even get married. But was that really what he meant when he said people should not get married? No, that's not what he really meant. Today, she's going to be teaching us or educating us on how to be able to submit in marriage and to our husbands and how there could be a balance at home for us to have sweet, happy homes. It's the Valentine season and we definitely would want our women to be happy as well as the men. And you know, a happy wife, you have a happy life. <laughs> All right, so uh, Rhoda, I'm going to be starting with you. Let's discuss International Level Up Conference 2021. Mm. What is this conference all about? Okay, so the International Level Up Conference is um, a platform that brings women and youth together in having a self-discovery beyond COVID. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, COVID-19 came with a lot of um, challenges and a lot of the youth are confused. It's affected our education, it's affected the jobs of people and um, homes are breaking. But the people that is affected much are the youth and women. So basically, we want to bring them under one umbrella, um, conscientize them that life still goes on. Whatever has happened, you are supposed to rediscover yourself because people are not able to balance in the system. Others feel it's come to stay, so everything should come to a halt. And we want to change that mindset that, look, beyond COVID, there's still life. So we have capital development experts who will help you find your purpose. You are confused because you don't know your purpose. Things are not going well for you. You are stuck because you don't know your purpose. So we are saying it's about time you level up. Mm -hmm. You need to level up in your thinking. You need to level up in your self-discovery. If you know who you are, 
you are confident. If you know who you are, you know places to go and you are accepted. So International Level Up Conference is, a, it is an opportunity to give to um, those of us who feel we are lost in this season of COVID, which is almost everybody. But the target is the youth and women. Okay. So come and discover yourself, pick the broken pieces, and forge ahead. Awesome. So I'd like to know who are the speakers that will be coming you know, for this conference and why did you choose them? Let's start with who is coming. Who is coming? Okay, so the, with the speakers we have um, Neil Armstrong Motagbe, who is a, cap a, um, a human capital expert. We have Oheni Rigitianti, mm -hmm. who is also a gender activist. Yes. And when it comes to issues of women and children, she's she, an authority. She's an authority. And then we have Reverend Mrs. Gloria Beautiful. Lamte. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend <laughs> Mrs. is going to be speaking at the event. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. She's going to speak at the event. And we have Reverend Mrs. Ajo Dickens, also from Perez Chapel International. She's also um, into women and youth stuff. And then we have Madame Dorothy Amwa. She is the founder for Dorothy's Hope Foundation. She's a breast cancer survivor. survivor. And you know, cancer does not only affect females, it also affects males. Yes. And there are things we need to know to prevent it. And even if you are a victim or a mother or a sister is a victim, there are ways we are supposed to treat them. The way we relate to them also helps them survive, which most people don't know. They feel it's only about the doctors who treat them good. But psychologically, there are things that we are supposed to do for ourselves, how we can test ourselves, how we can do other things. The media doesn't really cover everything. So she going through will share her testimony and then also teach us how to go about things between the youth and women as a whole. Awesome. I like the fact that um, Reverend Mrs. Um, Gloria uh, Kafri Lamte is going to be one of the speakers there and we have her here today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Reverend Mrs., this is a love month and um, we will be discussing relationship and marriages and how to have a peaceful home, especially in this season and beyond. We have this controversy around submission. Sometimes some of the women feel that it's a form of slavery. They're not comfortable with that word at all. Could you tell us what submission in marriage actually means? I have a very simple definition for submission. It's respect and mutual respect. And then making your husband lead in the home, making him feel he is the man, he's the priest, the king, the prophet of the home. Submission is knowing your place as a woman and as a wife in a home and doing what God, uh, God expects you to do and allow the man to lead. Awesome. So does that also mean submission to husband? Some people feel that submission in marriage is different from submission to your husband. Is it the same thing? Um, for me, let me say this. Submission is mutual. M man, when you read Ephesians chapter 5 from 21, he says, submit yourself one to another. So uh, there is mutual respect in the home before mutual submission in the home before it comes to the woman to say that submit to your husband. So a woman submits to the husband, submit in the home as a wife. Okay. Well, that's beautiful. Awesome. Would you want to contribute something to that? Um, what I have to say is that there are things that we need to learn, those of us who are not married and preparing ourselves to marry. Um, you know, um, the way the world is evolving with technology and stuff. Most of us learn a lot of things on social media, and we have a lot of theories and um, perceptions that people have given out there. So if you are not guided, for instance, those of us who feel we are educated, we feel that um, submission is slavery. So it depends on how we are being coached. So it's very good that today we have Reverend Mr. Gloria Lamte here, giving us, giving us the biblical perspective of how it is supposed to be. Because sometimes we feel that if I'm educated, I have my degree, I have my master's and I'm working, why should I really submit to a man who, um, let's say, I earn so much salary from? Because okay. it class sets in. But unfortunately, those of us who behave like that, how do our marriages end? Mm -hmm. Because we feel that it's all about having the physical or the material possession. So in case you are able to submit, others, others around you who are, who are having the same school of thoughts with you as an independent woman, you feel that there's no need for you to submit. But unfortunately, it breaks the home and 
um, it gives a negative impression about you out there. So sometimes we end up, we same Christians or um, those of us who claim we are children of God, we end up binding, casting, and doing other things. <laughs> Um, implying is the devil, but it's the character. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the way we think. We need to change our attitude. It, as she said, it's, m it's mutual. Sometimes culture also plays a very significant mm. role in mm. some of these things. Okay. And I'm sure people outside might also be watching. But when you go to the U.S., the culture there is different from Ghana. But the truth of the matter is submission is submission. And it cuts across everywhere. So if we really want to have peace as young people who are eager to marry or who are in a relationship where we are courting and we are hoping to marry, then we need to change our perception. Because when you study our trend now, divorce cases are on the increase. It's on the increase. You go the abuse cases, the way we talk, the way we behave. If you don't respect the other partner, how do you expect that person to also respect you back? So it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction, and this is the right time for us to know some of these things. So, so Reverend Moses is going to be coming for the program, and she's going to bring to bear a lot of the biblical things around women, how to empower women better. That's what she's going to be doing. Yes, on the show. exactly. The truth of the matter is that um, there are lots of conferences that you go and they are all theories. But the level up conference is a bit different. We are blending corporate with spirituality. We want okay. everybody to have their share of the cake. Um, Neil Armstrong comes with life experiences helping you to discover your purpose. Honorable um, or Henry Gustianti comes with the value of gender and uh, what a woman should expect. Reverend Mrs. Um, Goralante comes with a God factor. What is the reality, the practical aspect? We, you see, we want uh, the conference that you go and you hear practical things, you can relate with them, you know, directly. So we have day one for the youth, day two for the women. And it's, it's a weekend, so everything you want to know about helping you discover your purpose. And submission, it also plays a very significant role. If you are married and you're having issues, She's a counselor, so she'll be talking from that perspective. She has practical experiences to relate with. She's a living testimony herself. So it gives people the opportunity to relate to everything. It's not a normal conference that somebody will have a presentation, you take pen and paper and you write. No, this one, come and experience it yourself. Ask the questions. And we even have a counseling session after the program where nobody knows your story based on what you have heard. If you feel you need it, you are giving, you have been given the options. So by the time you are done, you can tell for yourself that mm, this is what I have to change. This is I think I need that. I think I can I can adjust with this. So at the end of the day, you have a balanced, um, I'll call it a balanced doctrine, where you can balance with everything. Awesome. Yeah. So I like to do, Reverend Mrs. Um, why should we submit to our husbands? Why should women have to submit? That is how God made it, and that's the command given to women. Okay. A man was not created for a woman. A woman was created for a man. We need to come to that realization and come to that understanding. Every man has an ego and pride. And if a woman touches that aspect of a man, you are doomed. You belittle your man, you are doomed. You must come to that point that it makes marriages work. Like she said, a, our culture plays a major role. What other people see as submission is to dominate, mm -hmm. which is a wrong perspective of submission. We must look at the word submission in its totality. What does it really mean? Most marriages or most men, let me say, abuse the word submission. We must submit as women. That is our God-given assignment. God created women to be help meets. I say this all the time. If a man is strong, he doesn't need a help meet. So God created us to help meet that man and to submit to him, for him to reach his assignment. If a woman, you know, you can't live with a contentious woman. Mm -hmm. A woman who submits to you as a man. Submission doesn't mean you leave your brain behind. Submission doesn't mean you agree to everything. Submission doesn't mean that um, you don't have a mind of your own. You are being directed as a robot. Leadership is when a man can come to that re realization and say, I am wrong. You are right. I, the man assumed the, post, the position of a leader, but then a leader is not an authoritarian. You must come to a point of, of including the woman in your daily life. You don't dominate her. You don't use her as a slave. You don't use her as a sex tool. You see her as a partner, 
and let her submit to you. You submit to her in respect. And you would have a good home, you have a happy home. But don't slave that woman because she must submit. I say this thing every day that um, if you're a man, we know you're a man. You are in trousers, we know you're a man. Yeah. Don't tell me that I am the man, submit. But that's what happens all the time. I'm the man of this house, I am in charge. No, then the man doesn't know his identity. If okay. you know who you are, you don't tell us who you are. We know already. Show, lead by example. Let's so let me talk from the Bible's point of view. I, I quoted Ephesians 20, uh, 5, 21. 22 says, woman, submit. Then 23 says that, man, love your wife as Christ loves the church. So a woman can only submit to a godly man, a man who is submitting to Christ. That is what is there. But some men will say, submit, 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 and they don't show love. Yours is to show love. Every woman who is loved right submit will submit. Will submit. Automatically, it comes automatic. It's only a foolish woman who will tear down, tear down her home with her own hands. But a wife who is loved, it comes just spontaneous. You know that, yes, I'm, for me to have a happy home, my children will be happy, let me submit. That is God's order. But it goes hand in hand with the loving. Awesome. When you love, submission comes totally. Okay, so in other words, Reverend Mrs. is saying that it's a shared responsibility. Yeah. The man submits to God. Mm -hmm. And when he submits to God, he's able to love his wife. That's right. And a woman who is loved right definitely is going to be submitted unless she is a woman who wants to pull down her own home. Yeah. Well, we're going to be going for another commercial break. When we return, we'll continue with the conversation. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Just before we went on that commercial break, we rounded up on the note that submission in marriage is a shared responsibility. We need the man to be able to submit to God. And when he does that, it's a lot easier for him to be able to do the command that has been said to him to love his wife. And a woman who is loved right, definitely, or has a higher propensity to actually submit to the husband, unless it's a woman who, def who just wants to pull down her home. So that's not the kind of home we're looking for. We want women who are loved right, who will be ready and willing to submit. So uh, we're also going to let you know right now from Rhoda who uh, or where exactly the event that is coming up, the International Level Up Conference 2021, where it will be coming up from. But I need to go to our Facebook page to be able to see what's going on there. And I see a lot of waves. I see our regular viewer, Isiwane Okereke from the United Kingdom, you're sending your wave. I also see Ramatu from Saudi Arabia sending her wave. I also see Adobia, you are actually sending us a wave from Afghanistan. How are you over there? All right, where are my African people? Let me scroll through. Okay, we see your wave all the way from Nigeria, Abuja, you are Uloma, Okechuku, Uloma. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are also seeing you here, um, Ekene Delutuku Oji. You're watching us from Togo. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me just keep scrolling and see where are the Accra people? Where are the Ghana Ghanaian viewers? Okay, here they are. Thank you very much. I see your waves from Tamale. I see you, Ramat, from Yendi. Thank you very much. Uh, Ramat. Uh, Ramat says, I really love the Reverend Minister. She is amazing and I follow her on Facebook. Okay, Ramat. Thank well, you. she's going, she's actually streaming right now on her page. So you could just um, talk to her from there. Okay. I also see other people here. Um, we're having some waves from um, Kumasi. I see another wave from the central region, Cape Coast to be precise. I see another wave from Takradi. Thank you very, very much. Um, um, if you want to ask questions, we're going to open up our phone lines very soon. And when we do, you could call in, okay? You can also send some of your questions as a message on our Facebook page, and I'll be reading them up to you. So tell us, Ruda, where is the International Level Up Conference happening, and when is it? Okay, so the International Level Up Conference is taking place on the 5th and 6th of March. It's a two-day event from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All protocols observed. observed. Um, at... Um, the Believer's House of Worship, that's where she's a church mother, um, off the Spencer's Road. We call the place Okwe Gono. Okwe Gono. Okwe Gono. So when okay. you get to Spencer's Road, even when you get to the last stop, you ask of the warehouse. Believer's House of Worship is opposite the warehouse. If you have any inquiries, you can also call 
0544 or even send a WhatsApp message. But we are selling tickets for this conference, but okay. we don't want the place to be crowded. And we want to assure um, those who want to come that we have enough space so they have nothing to worry about. Everything is in place. So you can pay via Mumu. Okay. You dial star 713, star 33, star 29, hash. Okay, please take it again. Star 713, star 33, star 29, hash. Or you can still call the 0544217662 or send a WhatsApp message and then um, we'll direct you as to how to go about it. We'll have people who decide to pay on that day. Mm -hmm. They can also call us and let us know so we can reserve their seats because we have them. a limited number because of um, the COVID. The COVID. Yeah. Okay, so please, I'd like you to mention the number, phone number once again. So the phone number to call to make any inquiry is 0544 217662. Okay. 0544 217662. You can also send a WhatsApp message and then we would assist we you with all the with inquiries. All yeah. right, that's amazing. So, uh, what time is it going to be? It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. British time. You British know, time. When, okay. you, when you look at our resource persons, they know what they are about. And there's not any kind of conference where you just go and sit down and wait mm -hmm. and nobody will come. Uh, they will even be there before some of us to get there. So we want to make sure that we come early and we leave early. If we are able to go strictly by the time, by 12.31, we should be out of the place. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, we just that's want beautiful. to stick um, to the time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I believe that all of us who are watching, you need to get onto that phone line and then make inquiries about how to get your ticket or how to reserve a space for yourself. Okay, so I'm moving over to Reverend Mrs. Kafui Lamte again. I just wanted us to highlight a bit to whoever is watching us right now what submission to your husband or in your marriage is not. Because we seem to have this impression of what submission is. Let's step back and say, okay, these are what submission is not. So that if people fall into that category, they will have a better understanding that what they used to think was submission is not what, what, no, what it actually is. So let's know what submission is not. I remember you mentioned something about submission doesn't mean you should leave your brain behind. Could yeah. you highlight on that again? Um, you have a mind of your own as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, God made you, like I said earlier on, a, help a helper. Um, you must not be pushed or coerced to submit. It comes in naturally. Submission does not cause you to be afraid of whoever your husband is. There is always dialogue. It's not slavery. There's no master-servant relationship in any marriage. It is not domineering. Submission is, that should not cause you to say that, okay, so these days what I hear every day as a counselor is that some people lose their self-worth mm -hmm. because of what their husbands tell them, you amount to nothing. You are not submitting every time you are not submitting. So they ask me, what should I do? How do I submit? I said, don't belittle your man. Don't put him down. Don't think. She said something that is very profound. She said that um, independent women sometimes think that, okay, I am earning more than you, so I cannot submit. Mutual respect. That is all. That is the bottom line. Just respect whoever your man is. Give him what he must, the authority he must exude as a man in that house. Don't say that um, I am older, I am more intelligent. No matter what, he is the head. Give that to him. But don't be a slave in that home. Okay, so the reason why I have to emphasize on this question about the slavery is the fact that here is a case where sometimes when as a woman you don't really agree with what the man is saying maybe there's something that's supposed to be done and you have this opinion about how it should happen the man is not even willing to even listen to your opinion because he feels that you are beneath him you're supposed to be submitting so what he says is final so in cases where you want to say okay could we consider it this way then he reminds you of your place 
I have said it and that's what goes. That's what the And they expect you to, you know, actually take it that way because when you take it, it means that you're being submissive. That's not, that's the problem with the African man. He thinks that to lord it over a woman means um, the woman must submit. No. There is the fact, I always teach my counsel is that where there is no understanding in a home, the man's views prevails. But then it shouldn't be every time. You can say you are the only one who has wisdom or you are the custodian of wisdom or knowledge in that home. It takes two to tango. If a godly man, I'm speaking from a pastor's point of view, mm -hmm. so a godly man must know that the woman was brought to him as a helper. You are not um, a master-servant relationship. Come to say that again. You must come to that point. But if you have an, an, an authoritarian as a husband, the best thing to do is to go to the one who made him. Because right, the Bible says the heart of a king is in God's hands. As he turns the waters, so does he turn the heart of a king. Mm -hmm. And prayer can turn the heart of that man. You should, you should not argue it out with him. Okay. You know, when you argue it out, that is when the he disrespect. wants to show you his authority. Uh -huh. So you leave him. God always has a way of dealing with stubborn people. When you take him to his master, the one he's submitting to, God can touch his heart. And that is where the challenge is. You leave him. It looks like when with the guys or with the men, okay, he, he's not ready to listen to you now. You let him be. Let yes. him, when, when he cools down, all the time, we always have to be the ones to understand. Well, you just, you know, let it be. If he doesn't want it that way, let it be. And that is what is killing a lot of women in our homes. Do you have anything to contribute uh, to this, Ruda? Because from the feedback I got from our audience when I talked about you know, us having to discuss submission, this is what they kept hitting at. The thing is, why is it the women always who have to be the ones to listen, who have to be the ones who are patient? Why are we not speaking to the men also to be understanding? Because it's, it's like when it comes to loving and submission, that everybody is always echoing the submission. Nobody wants to echo the love part. Mm, we okay. hardly do. Mm. Because if you echo the love part, it means that you are not being African. You're not being traditional. You shouldn't talk about that side. Or you're being being for the demand or what? Because you're supposed to demand. I can see it. I can see it. I can see I was laughing because um, I, kind of, I can kind of relate to this particular mm. experience. Okay. And I think there's something we are underestimating as women. Right from creation, women have been powerful, mm -hmm. women have been good managers. When you study the Adam and Eve strategies, that's you know, re really took place. People are really seeing the negative side of um, Eve. But you can tell that from most of the stories that we've read in the Bible, women always play a significant role. You see, when you don't know who you are, it's also an issue. Temperament plays a very important role in c communication. Women can put everything to a halt. That's what some people said, women are very powerful. It's because we can use our wisdom that God has given us to do more. Because in Proverbs, we are told that it is the wisdom of a woman that built a home. Why was it not it is the wisdom of a man? Women are supposed to be helpmates, as a reverend said, but we are underestimating who we are. You realize that we are the soft spot of men. That doesn't mean they are weak. But when a man puts up an attitude, a man who is egoistic, naturally we are told that men are like that. When there's confusion, the one that keeps the quiet, who wins? Well, the when a woman begins to nag, there's tension all over. But when a man begins to nag, and the woman is calm, within few minutes, it's gone. So we need to come to that point where we should know our purpose. And that is why I'm excited about this conference. Because it's, somewhat, it's something little, but we escalate. If you don't know how to manage it, then it escalates into something else. Yes, we are human, but truth be told, it's a bitter truth. God has given us that wisdom. Why would a woman give birth and go to work, do house chores, do that. We are people that God has given us so much, but how to discover it is where the challenge is. So once we know our purpose as women, 
we can control anything around us and, and, and make it work. That's a mandate. It's an inbuilt thing. But discovering it and using it positively is where the challenge is. So though, yes, we are human, men are like that, but that is how God has also created us to always calm the waters. We have that thing. It's an inbuilt thing within us. So until you are able to discover that thing around you, your home will never work. Okay. I have to go for another quick commercial break. When we return, we're going to be looking at the benefits of being submissive. Do not go anywhere. And you are welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. I'll be going over to our audience on Facebook to hear what they have to say. And uh, Pastor Isaac Kweku is watching live from Axim. Hello, Daddy. You're watching us. Thank you very much. Um, I also see some messages here from Akutam David. I hope I mentioned your name properly. Mommy, you are the best. And someone else, uh, Nana Kwesi Imbia. Mama G. Elias um, Michael says, knowledge unlocked. Rhoda, um, Rebecca Gadago says, well said, Rhoda. Another person, Agnes Corte, yay, this program is getting heated. More fire. And I see Nana Entry, and Nana Entry is also sending a wave. Uh, we'll get back to you all on Facebook. Thank you very much for staying there with us. Uh, we are going to be talking right now about how people can get their tickets uh, to be able to attend the international level up. Uh, conference but I hear we have a phone uh, call okay the phone lines are actually active right now and if you're trying to reach us please do that right away okay the phone lines the number is on your screen 0555657278 0555657278 you can call in to make your contribution or to ask questions around submission that is not very clear to you okay all right, so Rhoda, how do we get tickets to be able to attend the conference? So as I said earlier on, you can pay by your Momo or any network, um, egotickets.com, E-G-O dot com. They are those um, handling our tickets in for us. So when you dial star 713, star 33, star 29 hash, it will take you to their site and they will give you, you can do your payment. It's 100 CDs. We don't want, it's not a profit making um, venture. We just want to sort out our venue and other things. And we have it that after the program, the process, we're going to support 100 youth and women. Wow, 100 youth and women. With the vocational skill training. So um, once you purchase your tickets, you are not only coming to tap into those great resource persons, but you are also impacting possibly into somebody's life. So when you buy your ticket, you'll be given a code. That's what I'm saying that if you really want to pay on that day, you have to book your um, seat so that we know that this is what you know you really want to do with that. So you dial star 713, star 33, star 29 hash, or you call the number 05421. 7662 and you know we, we're going to direct you as to how to go about it okay mm -hmm. awesome i also see that my friend cheloka henry okoye is also watching us from nigeria the eastern part cheloka kekeme all right thank you very much for joining in so tell us what actually is the benefit of um being submissive in your marriage um, peace of mind peace of mind peace of mind okay um you get the attention and the love of your husband. You know, men want to feel good. I was telling Rhoda off camera that men have this mindset from, especially in Af Africa, women are put on the back burner. So it is your place. You're a second class citizen, be there. That is what they have put in their minds. Um, a a mother-in-law told a daughter-in-law that my son doesn't cook, my son doesn't clean. It is a woman's job to do all that. So that is what they have put into um, the man's mind while he's growing up. And that's what he's learned. And unfortunately, or fortunately, if you marry such a man, your place is to be a second-class citizen. Mm -hmm. It will take touching somebody like uh, Nigerians will say that you touch the mumu bottom of the man. Mm -hmm. You put <laughs> yourself down. If you really want love, you want peace of mind, Allow him to lead, allow him to do all that, and report him to your maker. Whilst it is God that touches his heart to turn around peace of mind, and you, 
if you put it at the back of your mind that this is what I want to do, it's very difficult. I said to you earlier on that um, it's difficult for a woman to submit. That is why God instructed us to submit. It is difficult for a man to love. That is why God instructed a man to love. Do your part as a woman and get that peaceful home, that peaceful marriage, and allow him to lead, and, and you are fine. Awesome. Uh, I, somebody's telling me here, you really have to read my message. <laughs> Otherwise, I will not be happy. Okay, I'm going to read your message, okay? I see something here from Abele G Jan Jr. He says, watching you live from Teshi. Abele Jr., son of the legendary Asamoa Jan Sr. <laughs> Keep it up. Okay, all right. Son of the legendary Asamoa Jan Sr. is the one actually sending in this message right now, mm -hmm. according to the post he's made here on our page. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining in. Okay, I have a message from Asabia. Asabia says, when it comes to submission, I think I'm trying my best. However, I am finding it very difficult to be able to deal with the fact that he does not see anything good in my ideas we are building he is choosing everything he wants how can a man choose what should be in the kitchen of a woman how can a man choose what should be in the living room how can a man choose what is in the bedroom in fact everywhere is all about what he wants there's nothing about me in that house and i feel really depressed wow <laughs> Like she said mm -hmm. earlier on, the temperament of a man. Yeah. If you're married to a choleric man, a choleric wants to be domineering, he wants to do everything on his own, he feels it's a weakness for somebody else to help. And they see a woman, uh, seriously, some men have uh, problems, some men are chauvinists. They have um, a, co a conception or a mindset that a woman is not, a woman knows nothing. And if you're unfortunate to marry such a man, you are in trouble. You need, he needs prayer. There's nothing you can do. You have to walk out of that marriage. You can't walk out because of these trivial things. What you have to do is to pray for him and allow God to speak to him. What you say, what, how you say what you say is very important. Mm -hmm. How you say it. How you say it. Communication, communication, in communication, 10% is words. 40% is tone. 50% is body language. So you can say the same things in different in ways. Different ways. And men want, do not want confrontation. Now, women, you can say what you are saying. Maybe you look at yourself. How am I saying? Why is he not hearing me? Am I say, not saying it right? Am I saying the wrong things at the right time? Some men, to women, most women don't know timing. When the man is in a bad mood, that is when we want to nag him. Mm -hmm. Know when and how to say what you have to say. And you'll be able to win him over. Oh, Charlie. You know, you know, like I said, press his mumu button. You've been married to him. You know how to. God has put that thing in a woman. If you are a woman, you are stronger than a man. I say that women think with both sides of their minds. Men think with one side. That is why you can see a woman multitask, feeding a baby, cooking, watching TV, cleaning, doing many things at the same time. And she does it well. A man will be there by the television um, reading newspaper. You cannot go and push him. He will, he will shout or something. They are, you know, analytical. Women are emotional. So you need to come to that point. Know your man. Steady him. If you nag him and you force him and you touch his ego, he's not going to give in. But if you pamper him, they are just big boys. Mm -hmm. Pamper him and say the right things at the right time. You win him over. Mm. Amazing. I can't believe that it's 9 p.m. already. We want this conversation to continue. However, because of our time, we cannot say much about it. But the conversation continues on our Facebook page and our various social media pages. Remember, the International Level Up Conference is happening on the 5th of March, and it's not going to take a long time, okay? Um, it's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and the people who are coming to speak to us are renowned people. So just try and get your tickets by the phone number that we have actually mentioned. Would you want to give some final words? Yes, um, we need a and partners. I'd like to thank Carl Bell for coming on board. Mm. Um, they are supporting us with this event. So if you're out there and want to partner with us or exhibit on that day, please call us on 0544217662 and we'll give you a spot. But I would, I would encourage Asabia to come to the event because we want to help people like that in her position. Amazing. Thank you very much to Voltaic Chana, Shito, Awo's hair, and uh, Afariwa Styles. I want to say tune in same time next week. Bye-bye.